Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where we're, today we're talking about trapezoids and kites. So first of all, the definition of a trapezoid is actually pretty simple. It's just a quadrilateral with only one pair of opposite sides called the bases being parallel to each other. That's it. So a trapezoid truly is just a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel, not both pairs, then it would be a parallelogram. So it's only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. And there's different types of trapezoids. We're going to have just your standard trapezoid, like I mentioned, one pair of opposite sides is parallel. We also have what's called an isosceles trapezoid, just like an isosceles triangle. So think about what we know about an isosceles triangle. Two sides are congruent and the opposite angles are congruent from those opposite sides. Same thing is true with opposite isosceles trapezoid. So this side, okay, the non-bases are congruent to each other. The base angles, you can see there's two sets. You have two sets of base angles that are congruent to each other. And also the diagonals in an isosceles trapezoid are also actually congruent to each other. So there's a lot going on here for sure. And then we have what's called a right trapezoid. So a right trapezoid has, of course, one pair of opposite sides parallel, but then it's got one pair of angles that are 90 degrees, okay? And also notice it's only one pair because if the other pair were also 90 degrees, then we're working with a rectangle. It says here, determine whether the figure is a trapezoid and if it is isosceles. So if I plot those points here, I get this figure. Now to prove that it is a trapezoid, we have to check to make sure that there's only one pair of opposite sides that have the same slope. So the slope of BC is zero, the slope of AD is zero, the slope of AB is two, and the slope of CD is negative two. So as long as I only have one pair and I'm gonna throw a circle around it, this is what we want, one pair of opposite sides, then that tells us that this is in fact a trapezoid. If these slopes were the same, two and positive two, then it's gonna be a parallelogram, which is not a trapezoid. Then we wanna to check to see if it's isosceles. So one way to check to see if it's isosceles is to check the distance of the diagonals. So as long as the diagonals are congruent to each other, then we know that it's definitely going to be an isosceles trapezoid. So I'm gonna just mark up my diagonals. <clears throat> so I'm checking the length of AC and the length of BC. And of course, I could use my distance formula from B to D, my distance formula from A to C. I could also look at this and say, well, you know what? I kind of see like these are a hypotenuse of a bigger right triangle. So if I look at A to C, this is the hypotenuse where the legs are one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five. So if I take a side of four and a side of five and use my Pythagorean theorem, I can solve for AC and I get the square root of 41. The same thing would happen if I find the length of BD, and let's say I use the Pythagorean theorem, BD is the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of four and a leg of five. And of course, if I'm using the same leg measures, I'm gonna get the same hypotenuse, and therefore it's definitely isosceles. Then we have what's called a median of a trapezoid. So the median of a trapezoid is equal to the mean of the bases of the figure. So remember the word median back in middle school, median meant if you were to list a set of data in order from least to greatest or greatest to least, the median is the value that's smack dab in the middle. So that's basically what the median is. The median is a segment in a trapezoid that is um, basically made of the midpoints between one side, one non-base side of the trapezoid and the other non-base side of the trapezoid. And the way we find the length of the median is we actually take the mean of the bases. So we add the top base, the bottom base, doesn't matter what order, divided by two, and that's actually that length. Okay, and that is what the median of a trapezoid is. So for example, if I said base one was eight and base two was, let's say 12, I would simply do eight plus 12 divided by two, and that is 10. And so my median here would be a length of 10. <clears throat> now a kite. So a kite is also a quadrilateral. And look at this figure, this diagram, this basically shows you what we are working with. So a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent consecutive sides perpendicular diagonals, and only one pair of opposite sides are congruent to each other. So let's break this apart. It says two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. So by that, we're talking about 
this pair of sides are congruent to each other. Okay, so you see the markings. And then this pair of sides are congruent to each other. It also says we have perpendicular diagonals. So you can see the right angle here based on the diagonals. And only one pair of opposite side angles, excuse me, are congruent. So only one pair of opposite angles are congruent to each other, which shows that this angle is definitely not congruent to this angle over here. Um, <clears throat> but those two are definitely congruent to each other. Something else that we're going to notice is that we have two pairs of congruent triangles. So this triangle here is congruent to this triangle. This triangle here is congruent to this triangle. So we've got two pairs of congruent triangles that we can definitely use, <clears throat> as well as this bigger triangle, okay, the one I'm showing you right now, is of course congruent to this bigger triangle. So you've got the two little pairs, two little pairs, and then you've got the one big triangle is congruent to the one bottom triangle. And of course, we can use that however which way we need it. <laughs> so first thing that we need to calculate and solve, let me just move my face over, is the measure of angle CED. So what we should see is if this is a kite, which it is, CED means the diagonals definitely are perpendicular to each other. So CED is 90 degrees. Now this is one, this one is saying, if EC is three and ED is 10, find CD. Well, we should see that, okay, if this is now a right triangle, then it's just the Pythagorean theorem to find C, CD rather. So three squared plus 10 squared is equal to CD squared. And then we get 109 and it's just simply the square root of 109. So that would just be a Pythagorean theorem problem if I was finding out one of the outside edges of a kite. If the measure of angle ABC is 90, so let me get rid of this information here so I can make way for my next problem. So ABC is 90, all right, and ADC is 110. All right, so this angle is 90 and this angle is 110. Find the measure of BAD. So what this is basically saying to us is, and we have to remember that these two angles would be congruent to each other. So if we're given one pair of opposite sides, angles rather, of this kite, they're not congruent to each other, it means the two leftover angles must be congruent because that's part of the definition of a kite. Right, so what I would have to then work out is, okay, well, 90 plus 110 plus two times whatever this X angle is, right? They're both X is equal to 360. So this ends up being 200. So I'm gonna add, uh, subtract the 200 on both sides. So then it's 2x equals 160. And so each angle would be 80 degrees. So the measure of angle BAD is 80. Measure of angle BCD, which I know I didn't need to find is 80. But remember, one pair of opposite angles and a kite is congruent, and that would be the case. Um, it says if BC is seven, find AB. So if BC here is 7, then we're going to know AB is also 7, okay, because we have the pair of congruent sides. It says if AB equals 7 and AE equals 5, find BE. So I'm going to zoom out just so we can see more of my screen. And I'll do one more little zoom out, and I'm going to erase some things because there's too much of a mess going on here. And so it says if AB is 7 and AE is 5, find BE. So this is another Pythagorean theorem problem for sure because we do have diagonals that are perpendicular to each other. So I'm basically saying that 5 squared plus this side squared is equal to 7 squared. So that is what's happening. Then, of course, we need to subtract and then take our square root, and it ends up being the square root of 24 is 2 radical 6. Remember, because radical 24 becomes radical 4 radical 6, which becomes 2 radical 6. Last problem, if the measure of angle ABC is 52, so I'm just going to mark that up. Again, it says the measure of angle ABC is 52, and ADC is 95, find BAD, and that is just like the other previous problem. So remember, these two angles are going to be congruent to each other. So we would be adding up 52 and 95. 
<clears throat> subtracting that from 180 and then basically dividing the rest by two in order to get that angle. So we're gonna add 52 and 95 plus two times that angle. That's another way you can do it. So we end up getting two times that angle plus 147 equals 360, subtract 147, divide both sides by two. And so the measure of angle BAD is 105 point, I'm sorry, 106.5. Okay, so again, you would add these two up plus these two angles that are congruent to each other should always add up to 360. It's a quadrilateral, all quadrilaterals add up to 360 and you're done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.